it off here. So as chair of the Rochester Select Board, I find that due to the state of emergency declared by Governor Scott as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic and pursuant to addendum six to executive order 01-20 and act 92, this body is authorized to meet electronically. In accordance with Act 92, there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting. However, in accordance with the temporary amendments to the open meeting law, I confirm that we are providing public access to the meeting using the Zoom platform. And, and find access to this particular meeting either on the posted warnings through town, through the town website, or by requesting a specific invitation <coughs> from the town clerk. And um, basically, that's the, that's the scoop. So I'm going to hand it over to Dan as we open up this um, special informational meeting in light of the, um, the form our town meeting will take this year. Take it away, Dan. Thanks, dude. Um, good evening. If um, if you don't know me, my name's Dan McKinley. I'm the elected town moderator, uh, at least until March 1st. We'll see. Uh, I, am I running unopposed? I haven't seen the ballot yet. It's usually a long list of, of, of nominations. <laughs> You're unopposed as near as I can tell. Okay. Um, <laughs> Ah, oh, there's the ballot. So um, I'm going to kick it off by um, reading the um, public hearing, uh, public informational hearing notice. Legal voters of the town of Rochester hereby notified and warned the select board for the town will hold two public informational hearings Monday, February 22, 6 p.m. and Thursday, February 25, 6 p.m. The purpose of these public informational hearings is to review articles 11 through 13 as presented on the 2021 town report. Town of Rochester annual meeting warning. These public informational hearings will be conducted remotely via Zoom for information on how to participate and connect. Um, you've already figured that out. Um, procedures for uh, the remote Zoom meeting were in the town, um, town report. Uh, voting on our, all articles presented on the warning, including the election of officers, will take place by Australian ballot on Monday, March 1st, 2021. For information on the annual meeting and the Australian ballot voting, please see the warning and notice the voters posted herewith. Pages okay. seven and eight yeah, we, town report. Uh, oh, um, we'll, you know, when they're talking to the reporters. Who is oh, that? A couple of, um, couple of housekeeping things. Um, I would request that you keep your uh, microphone on mute. Uh, just so we don't get background noise um, and then turn it on as um, when you're ready to speak. Try and recognize folks um, as you put your hand up at the bottom of your screen, there is a reactions button. If you click on that, there's a hand raise function. So you can put your hand up or you can wave, literally put your hand up and wave. Um, with this number of people, we have 20 participants, oh, somebody in the waiting room. Um, We'll, uh, we'll do our best to, to not talk over each other and, uh, and be courteous. Um, uh, <clears throat> so we're, um, this is primarily informational. Uh, really, we're hoping not to get into a lot of dialogue and the yeas and nays and the um, merit of the, of the individual articles, but more for information so people understand what the articles are and what they're voting on. Um, so please feel free to ask clarifying questions um, on, on any of these uh, topics. We'll take them in the order the articles are in the town report um, in the morning. And I'll start off with Article 11. Shall the uh, term of the town clerk be changed to three years effective um, town meeting March 7, 2022, pursuant to state law? Any questions or comments on that? Seeing none, hearing none, move on to the second one. The article 12 reads, shall the term of the town treasurer be changed to three years effective town meeting March 7, 2022, pursuant to state law? Any questions, comments on that one? 
Seeing none, we're moving right along. Article 13, shall the voters authorize payment of real and property, real and personal property taxes in four installments with two dates, Monday, August 16, uh, Monday, November 15, Monday, February 14, and Monday, May 16, 22, 2022, by delivery to the tax collector before 4 p.m. on those dates. Any questions, comments on that one? Okay, Article uh, 14. Shall the voters authorize total highway and general fund expenditures of $1,095,646, of which $766,833 shall be raised by taxes? Questions, comments? I see one of the phones lighting up. Whoever ends in 3327, did you want to jump in there? Nope, okay. Uh, you tell us how to do it. If you're on a phone and you don't have um, a reaction button, you can just, just holler out and we'll, we'll uh, make sure you're, you're able to, to speak. Okay, we'll go on to uh, Article 15, if there's nothing on Article 14. Um, Article 15 reads, shall the voters appropriate $45,625 towards operating expenses of the Rochester Public Library. If I don't have last year's numbers here, I don't feel like well, you, have to look, you have to look at the budget. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, hearing any questions on 15, let's go to Article 16. Shall the voters appropriate $69,479 to provide ambulance service from White River Valley Ambulance? Questions, comments? Hearing none, we'll move on. Yes. Uh, yeah, I'd like to know uh, why there isn't an article for the Granville first response. Mm -hmm. Hey, um, I forgot to mention at the beginning, please identify yourself if we can't see you, if, if we don't have your name. So whoever is speaking, identify yourself and... Um, okay, Salvina Harvey. Oh, I'll be, um, can someone address? Nancy, you want to take that? Granville first response, if you look in your budget, you'll find that they are part of the budget. Where, on what page, please? One second. Um, page 31, line... Under general town expenses, 107, 10, 30, 960, 000. And that's a budget line. Oh, I see it, yeah. Uh, under general employee or? What's, what's the, it's under town oh, expenses? Oh, okay. We see it. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, just wanted to make sure they're included. All right. Thanks, Elia. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions on that Article 16 on the White Valley Ambulance? We don't know. none, we'll move on to Article 17. Shall the voters, <clears throat> excuse me, vote to appropriate $20,400 to continue funding the Fast Trash and Recycling Program, a receipt of recyclable, recyclables and trash with, with residents paying for trash per bag from July 1, 2021 through June 30, 2022. Okay, move on to Article 18. 
Shall the voters vote to appropriate 8,000 to continue funding the town buildings reserve fund? Okay, we'll move on to Article 19. Shall the voters vote to appropriate $1,000 to continue funding the tennis court reserve fund? Okay, we will move on. Article 20. Shall the voters vote to appropriate the requested sum of $3,000 to the Central Vermont Council on Aging? No questions? Go to Article 21. Shall the voters vote to appropriate the requested sum of 2,000, excuse me, dinner's ready. Um, shall the voters vote to appropriate the requested sum of $2,066 to the Clara Martin Center? Amen. Move on to Article 22. Shall the voters vote to appropriate the requested sum of $100 to Green Vermont? Okay, moving on. Article 23. Shall the voters vote to appropriate the sum of $9,849 to the Quintown Senior Center? No questions, we'll move to Article 24. Shall the voters vote to appropriate the requested sum of $250 to the Orange County Parent Child Center? No questions, moving on to Article 25. Shall the voters vote to appropriate the requested sum of $250 to Safe Line Inc? No questions, no comments. Moving on to Article 26. Shall the voters vote to appropriate the sum of $1,300 to Tri-Valley Transit, formerly Stagecoach? No questions on that one. We'll move to Article 27. Shall the voters vote to appropriate the requested sum of $100 to Vermont Rural Fire Hydrant? Do you want to ask anything about the partnership? Uh, article 29 coming up. Okay, nothing on uh, Article 27. We'll move to Article 28. Shall the voters vote to appropriate the requested sum of $4,800 to the Visiting Nurse Association? No questions, no comments. We'll move to Article 29. Shall the voters vote to appropriate the requested sum of $875 to White River Partnership? Okay, no questions, no comments. We'll go to Article 30. Shall the voters vote to appropriate the requested sum of $250 to Women's Safe? Seeing none, go to Article 31. Shall the town of Rochester be required to inform its residents when sources of radiation, such as that from cell towers and 5G antennas, are being proposed for installation within its town limits? Any questions, comments? Well, this is Deb Moore, and for the sake of the few people that are there, I, I guess I'd like to read my little explanatory statement again. Go ahead, Deb. With that? Okay. Um, so this Article 31 should be considered a right to know question for improving communication between our town government and its citizens whenever a telecom industry giant submits a proposal for new wireless infrastructure to be deployed in Rochester. Why? There's a time factor involved for citizens to have any agency concerning placement of cell towers and small cell antennas in our community. Our town government has the legal right to make decisions about the placement of wireless infrastructure 
and those of us who petition want that right to be respected and facilitated by our town officers. We are not a special interest group. Concern about impacts of wireless infrastructure is public interest shared by many. In just a few days, uh, during a week of severe cold weather in a mid-January pandemic, over 50 registered voters in Rochester signed our petition. Our belief is that a citizen should have the right to know and the right to have a say about what goes up in our neighborhoods. Aesthetic impacts can affect property values. And with the new small cell antennas, thousands of studies document serious health impacts to humans, as well as birds, bees, and trees. We don't need another health crisis. What we do need is internet connectivity that follows well thought out safety standards. Thank you. Next up, uh, Mark Alexander. Um, yes, I just wanted to um, bring up something that um, somebody asked about in the Monday meeting. Um, there was there's some confusion about the term 5G uh, because a lot of home routers, home wireless routers now advertise having a, the so-called 5G feature. Um, it tr um, turns out this has absolutely nothing to do with the 5G that's used by um, the new cellular uh, phone technology. It's um, in home routers, it refers to a Wi-Fi standard that is based on the five gigahertz frequency. And so, um, so I just wanted to clear that up because some people were, one person was uh, worried that, um, you know, because they had a 5G router at home, they were worried that maybe somehow this article uh, was concern, concerned them and it, and it turned out there's actually no connection whatsoever. Um, um, and there was another, somebody else asked about, um, you know, the fact that the, the Public Utilities Commission um, has to approve new, uh, new wireless um, installations. And it turns out that some installations are, are called de minimis installations, which means that they're, they uh, are um, modifications to existing wireless towers. So for example, if AT&T were to decide to upgrade the tower and it's in the Federated Church um, to add 5G support, it's possible that they would be able to um, get approval from the PUC without any public input. So in cases like that, it is important for the, t for the residents of the town to know about these projects because um, otherwise they could possibly be um, approved by the PUC without any public input. So it's important for us to have some say in that uh, process too. So thank you. Thanks, Mark. Anyone else have questions, comments on Article 31? Seeing none, hearing none. I think um, that wraps up our um, information, public information hearing. Um, Dune, you want to take it from here, close the hearing? And... Yep, yep. Well, um, this will um, declare the, the hearing closed. And that was all that we had on the agenda for tonight. So I uh, will um, thank you Excuse all. Excuse me. Wait, one moment. A minute, please. I asked, this is Alvina Harvey. I asked the question uh, of who filed the petition for Article 31, please. A, a group of um, people from Rochester, uh, and we had over 50 uh, signatures for it. Okay, so uh, you can, there's a record of that. There's a yeah. record of that. Oh, yeah. sure. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You bet. Hey, sorry, didn't need to cut off questions there. Anyone else? Where we close? Okay. Okay. Let's try this again. Thank you, Dan, for moderating this, and thank you all for coming out. And uh, I guess we won't see you in the school auditorium, but. Um, We'll all join together in voting our, our preferences for the, um, the issues to be decided at the town meeting. So um, keep
keep warm and we'll see you around town. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Have a good evening, everyone. Good night. Have a good evening. Good night.